You're listening to the A to Z of Human Performance live show weekdays at 13.30 GMT with Chris Lisman and resident expert John Osirkham. Alongside Emma Wicks and Steve Eaton. Please enjoy responsibly. Well, yeah, we're going to do a lot of enjoying responsibly today, everybody. Welcome, Chris. Welcome, everybody. The well, book is please. live on Amazon. It's our launch party. Thank you for joining us. We've got sound effects galore. <laughs> we made it. We're live. It's the launch show. The book's up on Amazon. You can download it now and you can order your printed copy. Printed uh, copy. We're, we're e-book. 20 shows in, can you believe? Uh, it's been great to have Emma and Steve along with us along the way. And we're delighted to welcome them back to have all three authors on the show for the first time. Emma and Steve, thanks for joining us. Here they I are. Thank you. <laughs> it is the first time. Hi. This is actually, Chris, this is how we wrote the book. So we had a nice Zoom call, the three of us, and then talked about what's important, and then went off and did some writing and then edited. So, yeah, what an honour. write the sequel now. Those were great days, weren't they? Those were great Heady days. days. Lockdown one. Lockdown one, when it was all fun. <laughs> it was really fun. Sun was shining. I do feel a bit like Lockdown three is a bit like a film sequel, like it's just getting worse it and worse. worse. <laughs> yeah. The Fast and the Furious 19. Yeah. The producers of this one aren't up to the same standard no. as the first one, are they? No. no. Um, But we're going to take the same format for this show. We're going to have 30 minutes. We're live. Um, But rather than looking at the chapter uh, that we should be looking at, we're just going to have a bit of fun. We're going to find out a bit more about the authors of the book, The A to Z of Human Performance. Um, So tell us a bit more about how the book came about. We know it was a Zoom call. Uh, We know you're all from different walks of life. How how did that come together? Well, we we are all also quite old. That's what I've realised, Chris. (laughs) So between us, we've collected a lot of life experience. You can only speak for yourself, John. I can't. I don't want to ask Emma how old she is, but I'm realising she must be at the top end of what's possible for an Olympic champion. I am. I've fallen into that bracket where, you know, you get those brackets when you're filling in a form. Yeah. That goes like 35 to 39. I've now, I've now fallen into the, into the next bracket. So I'm certainly, I'm certainly of an age which should, be, should know better, I think. Yeah. I'm thinking, I'm guessing that we've got at least 120 life, years of life experience between us, Chris. That's what, that's the first thing we did tapped into that steve's probably lived two lifetimes <laughs> all the things he's done yeah so this is a it's a combination of, of years of experience um and what what motivated you emma to want to be part of the book um i think well, john is very hard to say no to it's probably <laughs> the first it's probably the first thing um but i think it's something that i've been thinking about for a couple of years or wouldn't it be nice to to think i had enough good things to say to write a book um, and then I realized I probably didn't on my own but I had this kind of concept of of an A to Z of, of kind of performance type insights and then Jonna approached me and said well, I think we should write a book and I know this great guy called Steve and and what do you think so um, yeah I think probably probably the fact it coincided with lockdown and the postponement of the games meant that I kind of jumped on board and and I'm so pleased I did because the guys have you know dragged me through but but I feel really proud of what we've kind of produced yeah I think I think you should be and and Steve what about for you what what experiences from your years of experience have have come into this book well I think <laughs> from my perspective you know and I think in terms of the book you know John knows that you know writing a book was never really something that I actually wanted to do you know but I know John you know is is, is is trying to help me move on i suppose to my past but i think uh but i think for me what i thought i could bring to the book i think and i suppose it's it goes against the all the amazing things that you know you know people have like you know emma have, has achieved and john and i think for me the beauty was i could bring lots of experiences where i got things wrong and I look back on my life, I, you know, I've done all right in the end. I've got there and I'm, I'm doing all right. Actually, I've got some, some of my most um, valuable experiences of ones where things have not necessarily gone according to plan or where I've made poor judgment calls or where I've just decided to do something that probably isn't the best thing at the time. Um, but saying that, what I have learned over the years is that, you know, all these things that we do, whether we get them right or whether we get them wrong, you know, 
they are so valuable as experiences in, in moving forward. And I suppose it's it's how you pick through the bones, I suppose, and, and look for the valuable things in order to say, right, OK, that didn't go that well or that went really well. What are the things I can pull together to um, to do? And I think during the times of COVID, I think that's what sort of persuaded me in a way subconsciously to yeah. take part in this was actually to that, that actually these experiences that all of us have got um, is encouraging people out there that are working so hard in really challenging situations to uh, to learn lessons and move forward themselves. Yeah, so, so so even some of the experiences where things haven't quite gone to plan are feeding into the book and you're helping people to learn from those before they've had those experiences. Uh, to get to know you all a little bit better, I've got a question. If you weren't doing what you're currently doing, uh, eight times world champion, CEO, performance coach, what would you be doing? Oh, John, let's come to you. I, I think I'd like to be a mountain climber. Would you? Yeah, but I live somewhere so flat. Uh, when I go out on my bike, I, my friends who are on Strava comment say, how did you possibly do 100 kilometers with only doing like a couple of hundred meters of climbing? So I'm probably living in entirely the wrong place. I'd need to move somewhere else and live in the mountains, Colorado or something. And then uh, go and hike up above the snow line and have a lot of escapades with friends uh, eating dehydrated food. Or similar. That's what I'd be doing. It's quite an image. In fact, maybe Steve, maybe Steve can take me somewhere. Fun. <laughs> um, I think. Well, I was a I was a teacher before I became an athlete, so um, I I probably should go back to that. But I don't think I, I could now, knowing my friends that are still teachers and and the the huge challenges and changes. I think I probably am not not equipped necessarily to go back to that. But I've always quite fancied being a butcher, um, oh. and I can't I can't explain that because. <laughs> Um, I don't know it's just something around yeah the smell of a butcher's shop I don't know what it is but I definitely um, yeah Maybe quite childhood fancy. memory yeah I think it probably is but uh, yeah just have it have you got a childhood up. memory of going to the butchers yeah no I have because I remember having seeing it all lined up it's all neat and all, all you know all quite size. Meat, meat. yeah that's meat, what you could call it. Meat. I could call it meat meat. M's meat meat. meat. Yeah. You, maybe it's just because a, you're, you're always thinking about nutrition. Yeah. But yeah, maybe. Maybe. I mean, I think it's quite an unrealistic uh, dream, but. No, yeah. I don't think so. There's butchers in the street near where I live. <laughs> okay. Hook and cleaver. I'll maybe, I'll maybe, you could be the maybe. first butcher to deliver meat by canoe. That I would could. Be. Now there's a <laughs> there's, market. There's people out there living on rivers who can't there's, get that fresh yeah. meat. There is someone wanting that somewhere. Risk it yeah. by boat. But yeah, and but actually, I am trying to eat less meat now as well. So it's probably not going to be not going to be a great for my career. But no, who knows? No. Steve, what about you? Crikey. Well, I think you know when I joined the forces when I was eighteen, there was <clears throat> there was actually nothing else I wanted to do. I think you know I did. I think I'd bluff myself that I went to I popped along to Birmingham University to look at sports psychology or sports science course there and I think but I think I was just just treading water if you like I just didn't know what I wanted to do apart from the forces you know so so I think since since leaving the forces what did appeal to me in the early stages was uh being an architect and uh I, I like I like neat things uh I like the idea of being able to do things collaboratively with a team of people so to build things uh but I also like having the having the time by myself as well, you know, and I thought, you know, having a little office with a, you know, your easel and your pencils, I could have it all neat. Oh, yes, you know, keep the kids and everybody away from it. And you could build something, you know, and I, my father-in-law is a, was an architect. And uh, I just think what a great thing. And luckily my son and I've got some friends who are, and I just think what a, what a great thing. But I'm saying that now with the hindsight of having been in the forces for a long time and the chaos that I went through there, so maybe it is that semblance of order. I don't know that I'm... You do like a bit of order, Steve. I've just, I've realised now I'm seeing it coming through. But <laughs> you'd be also, great it, it blowing mean... things up to make the space for the new building. Yes. And it would mean that you could use all those little protractor things. You know, you have at school, all those little protractors and... Yeah. See, no, but I was never good at maths. This is, but see, these are where plans are flawed, you see, because I was never good at maths. And... I actually am quite traditional as well. So I love old buildings and I love greenery. So the thought of building on green land would just, just kill me. And the thought of knocking down some amazing buildings like you've got in Bournemouth, you know, just, I, I don't know. But there again, I'm trying to change 
And so looking at new buildings now with, through different eyes, I don't know. You know. I think that it's interesting, isn't it? Because you, you build up quite a bit of um, background in what, in what you do. And you end up, it, there's a thing called sunk costs where, where you've put effort and time into something and you can't move on from it. But it is interesting to think, you know, career change or like sometimes I get bored being CEO interactive workshops because I've been doing it for a long time. And a lot of the things we do, I've done a lot of times before. And then you think, all oh, right, maybe it's time for something new. So I think it's, it's interesting to think about how life and careers evolve. And when you've got a lot of equity in something that you've invested in, it's hard to move on. Um, but, it, but it is good to think about that. I was interested just, I was going to share just a quick story, Chris, on coming to how mm -hmm. the book also came together. That um, my secret, Steve mentioned, I did, I think I slightly did want to help Steve like grow a bit. I think that was in there. But the real reason was I also wanted to get to know Steve and Emma better. And um, I'd, I'd got in my objectives for last year, like collaborate, hip hop style collaborations with interesting people. And then when we we're all in lockdown, it's like, do you know what? this is a really good way to get to know Emma and Steve because we can have a weekly call. I think if I'd said to them, hey, what about a weekly call just with no task? It'd be, it wouldn't have worked. But this is, this is how like the music industry works is like creating these collaborations. And um, it's a great way to build relationships. And then here we are a year later having good old chit chat. I said, I just wanted to see you guys and hang out. I do, but I do find it amazing, Jonna, that we've only seen each other virtually. Like, it's amazing. So, many, like so many people in the last year, they've only seen people virtually but I genuinely feel like we've been through. You and Steve have never met. The, no, we've never met. We've never met. But I genuinely <laughs> feel incredible. like we've like we've been through the last year kind of together. And I think yeah. I feel like I've met met Steve in person. And it yeah, it's bizarre, isn't it? I think it's, people, it's, it's, it's that connection. It's about those connections. And I think that's what that's what that's why the lockdown's hard for people because you miss those connections. So if we can do it through, you know, virtual means and and actually come out of it in pretty good shape then that's that's great yeah a lot of people say that you know you can't have the same kind of connection through virtual and i don't think you can but you can still build relationships yeah, i was yeah. thinking you know if like, i've got family members who are in australia and um they have every week a zoom call or whatever and have done for the last 15 years and the grandparents and the kids know each other really well and uh it's amazing what you can build but that's maybe that's what Maybe that's the question we should be asking is what we're going to do together next. We've got our book launch today. It's out there. It's on Amazon. Uh, but we'll have to come up with some other ideas. But it is interesting, the, the world of uh, collaboration, and especially if it's something that's got a moderate commercial angle or a, a kind of human benefit angle. Uh, there's a lot of good good that can be done when good people pool their ideas. What should we do, Chris? Yeah, have you got ideas? Do you want to be in on the next one? Yeah, I think feature film next. Feature film. <laughs> Feature film. Feature film. Oh yes. I've only, I've only got a Facebook radio. Under. That's the problem. I think I I I keep joking about this, but Emma keeps not being able to get to work because of the floods. It's the only Olympic canoe champion I know that can't get to work because of the floods, and it, it can't go canoeing because there's too much water. Yeah. But with Steve's kind of marini style background, I actually was in the Boy Scouts, and I I did a GCSE. My one of my GCSE sports was canoeing. Oh, so well, I think we I you think you qualified. I think we should do a little boating adventure, a bit like those fishing programs where Bob Mortimer and whatever goes off, and then you just have a video yeah, yeah, chatting yeah. about rubbish. Uh, something you like that. You should all have to teach each other to do your job. Oh, that'd be easy. Yeah. And you know, like you sort of uh, bring bring a bring your son to work day, but it's bring a mate to work day. You've got to teach yeah. them to do your job. Def I definitely think there's so some Emma's sort of challenge. Emma's CEO interactive workshops for a day. <laughs> I'm not sure I've got the skills. Emma will be great at that. <laughs> <laughs> We'd actually have to step up our game because it'd be terrifying. <laughs> um, what's been going on for you, Steve? You've been we've been enjoying the lockdown. I was I was reflecting this week that despite knowing a lot about high performance, when this just goes on relentlessly, <laughs> it's like being in an Arctic research station in winter, Antarctic. It's just a lot of staying indoors. Uh, how are you getting on? Are you okay down there in Bournemouth? Are you? Are you using your strategies to keep your motivation high or are you also, despite being near superhuman, experiencing the lows? Of course, I'm experiencing the lows as well. It's a, it's a challenge, isn't it? I've got one little fellow next door doing his homeschooling and I've got one at school and a wife working work out, working really hard. So I don't know, it's the it's the trying to convince yourself that you're doing a a reasonable job at getting through all this and be useful um and I, I suppose i am trying to apply some of the things that i 
talk to other people around, work with other people, trying to apply that to myself um, and to everything else, you know. So, yeah, it's, I think it's a challenge for everybody, regardless of what they do. You know, we're, we're human. We like other people. We need other people. And actually not being able to, you know, hug people or go for a beer with people, you know, um, spend time with people in their presence, you know, in their company is really, really tough, I think. So, um, you know, I feel the pain of, you know, my children, you know, that don't get to see their mates and uh, my wife that doesn't either. And my mum, you, know, you know, I lost my dad this time last year, just before, you know, the first lockdown. And, uh, you know, my mum, you know, has, has managed, you know, since then. So that's that's obviously been of concern, you know, and been on our mind, you know, but I just think, you know, I'm looking forward to getting back that bit where we all, can all go and give each other a good hug and uh, and meet Emma for the first time and uh, meet you, Chris, for the first time. You know, type of thing, so. yeah. we'll all be hugging. I can't yeah. wait. The vaccine's well, on the way. Well. It sounds yeah, really challenging on a home life when, as you say, you know, you've lost somebody and it's a, a challenging year. I was thinking also, I mean, you know, we 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 know you're a very strong person, and we know you're not just mentally, physically, but also mentally. But it must be really hard training away, thinking about. Tokyo delayed one year, then maybe you can't go the next year. I know on the business side, if there was that kind of uncertainty, it's a bit like when you're a kind of startup and you've got various series of fundings and you never know whether you're going to get your next series from your investors and therefore all your hard work, you don't know whether, if you don't hit certain goals, you, well, it's out of your hands whether you'll get the next round of funding. But I imagine it must be a bit bit challenging to kind of keep your head in the game. Uh, you know, I was listening to the news, they're saying... It, it, could it could go it may may not happen what's going to happen i mean how, how do you deal with all that especially and without being rude also you know you're nearer the end of your olympic career perhaps than the start unless there's another sport coming over the horizon but <laughs> uh you know m maybe you know actually i've just realized though, that this at least means you must have been the paralympic champion for five years yes exactly, exactly. oh yeah so you'll be getting off on that that's fine but <laughs> how do you but how do you i mean you must have ups and downs thinking about that and you're putting in all this work. I'm sure there'll be world championships and things at least next year, but, you know. Yeah, I think I think you're right, John. I think it's really challenging. I think, you know, something you mentioned just there, you were listening to the news, that's probably your first mistake. Um, I think as a as a Paralympic athlete, when the Games is, is so unsure, one of our f first mistakes is to listen to the news and the speculation. And, mm. and actually, it's really unhelpful. And I think in the process of writing the book, when we, when we talked about noise and controlling the controllables and all those sorts of things, I've kind of matured to a stage whereas in the previous games that I've been to you you listen to all of that because it's so exciting and it's about the games and you're going to go to the games and and you, and you want to engage with it all and actually it just ends up distracting you or sapping some of your energy and I, I think I've kind of realized this time around that that is all completely out of my control so I feel quite at ease with the thought process that what I'm doing between now and August is not going to change whether the games go ahead or not. I'm I am trying to make the boat faster. And it's amazing. So you've got that clarity. You're trying to be the best of yourself. That's what. Yeah, you're... and I think it's probably around that. It's around knowing what what our job is, and our job is to make these two boats as fast as we possibly can to try and race them at the same Paralympic Games, which which no one's done before. And I think you know, whilst it would be devastating if the games don't go ahead, it will be because there's a really good reason why they shouldn't. And, you know, when they were postponed last year, I think I've mentioned it before, we went from 162 days to go to 520 odd days to go. And that felt quite a hit to start with. It's a lot but of cottage even, cheese. That's a lot more days. Yeah, that's a lot more training, a lot more cottage cheese. But equally, it felt like it was definitely the right decision. Um, but equally, one that I, did, I had no control over. So I think the difference between the athletes very much at the minute are, you know, the younger ones that, that maybe have not been to as many games are getting involved in all this noise and this speculation. Um, and, you know, being slightly more mature, as you've kindly mentioned, I've kind of realised to batten down the hatches and, and just get on with it. Because if the games don't happen, I'll, obviously it'd be devastating, but there'll be a very good reason behind it. And my job doesn't change. I'm trying to make these two boats fast. And hopefully I get to show the world that on the world stage. But equally, if I don't, you know, there's probably more important things going on. Yeah, it's really interesting what you're saying there, actually, that a bit like Steve's chapter on noise, you mentioned that, but a bit of wisdom to shut out distraction, cut yourself off from what's not relevant, focus on what you can control and what you actually enjoy. Yeah. And I know you enjoy work, you must enjoy what you do intrinsically. 
So yeah, otherwise you wouldn't can't, get out It's not a hardship, is it? So yeah. I guess it's the same for me. I mean, you know, we've got economic challenges. Like we've only run two face-to-face workshops since March last year. Uh, they would call it economic headwinds of like economy. And, um, but I like what I do and I like working with the people I work with. And, uh, it, you know, so why worry about that? It's outside of our control, whether there's a good economy, bad economy, everything else. Let's just do what we do and do it as best we can. And I think sometimes as well, John, it's about working out, you know, I don't know, I don't remember if we spoke about this in any of the chapters, but around what you're grateful for, mm. you know, we're all, we all should be incredibly grateful that we are fit and healthy and able to sit here on a Monday morning having, having this conversation, um, you know, and I'm really grateful that we've, we've got special dispensation to train and to, and to actually go and see real humans, you know, within, you know, within the boundaries of social distancing, but that, that is something to be so grateful for that actually it puts everything in perspective. And, mm. and I think that's, if you start every day with that kind of mindset in terms of actually what can I be grateful for rather than what, you know, what is frustrating and what is what is annoying and what is different, I think we're probably starting the day in a better place. Yeah, yeah. it picks up on one of the key principles of the book, doesn't it, to choose um, and focus on what you can control uh, and, and choose decisions that you actually are in control of. You can choose your belief you can choose your mindset. You can choose to get rid of the noise. Um, and just coming back to the, the kind of topics we've picked up on um, from the book, uh, we started off thinking about attitude and belief uh, and culture, and we've come right through to thinking about resilience, setbacks, teamwork. I just want to pick up on your favourite bits, your favourite chapters or topics from the book. Um, I imagine you you won't pick your own, but you might do. <laughs> Yeah, which I mean, what you what's your favourite area of the book, John? I'm I really like the fact that it's not too long, so that's my favourite bit. Uh, <laughs> and and, it, and genuinely, you know, the um, I always think with kind of businessy kind of books, a lot of those books are just one message, and then it's just repeated over five hundred pages. And um, so this is more like tapas, where there's a lot of few little insights. Oh, I, I love guess, tapas. Yeah, but I also like the other thing is a lot of the books these days are very super scientific and um i did study a science degree and did do psychology so i kind of am on board with that but at the same time i mean we can't we can't take on board every bit of science i mean is think how much science is out there there's people working on every single field and they're all providing statistics on what we could do we could you know if we were just to look into nutrition or sleep habits there's hundreds and hundreds of things we could or should do to get all these different benefits uh and then some of them overlap some of them conflict so you know, in many ways, we don't need to. Um, it would be impossible to, to take the whole body of science yeah, and apply it to our life. Our life. Uh, less is more, and um, each chapter is pretty short. And um, yeah, so that that makes me happy, and um, it means that I feel I feel I can recommend it with integrity because you couldn't get bored <laughs> reading it. If you want to pick it up and put it down, that's fine. And maybe I've got a short attention span, Chris. <laughs> maybe. Do. What about you, Steve? What 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 are your highlights from the book? Well, meeting you guys, really. Um, <laughs> no, I mean it because it's, um, I think it happened at, at a time where, you know, during that early lockdown, you know, when there was so, so much uncertainty going on, you know, and uh, and I think just meeting you guys. And, and I think, you know, from, you know, I think working, doing the stuff with, you know, with you guys at Interactive Workshops is, um, has always been great fun. And it is always... Um, I've always loved the amount of energy that all of you guys have got, you know, and, you know, you lead by example, Johnny, you know, and, uh, but every single person I've ever met with within interactive work has always been truly inspirational and truly, you know, just absolutely professional, want to get a great job done. So, so it was actually really nice to join into a party where people um, not only want to achieve something, you know, but achieve it, achieve something good and, you know, do it well, but also I've really, have lots of fun doing it. I'm doing it differently as well, you know, and I think, you know, you talked about Emma before and actually, you know, it was lovely to meet Emma, you know, and, and I think striking up a relationship like this just goes to show because, you know, it is, there is genuine feeling in this and yet I've only met Emma on a screen. It's, it's quite incredible. And, uh, I'm so quite dull in real life. The energy the has been fantastic. So I just think, you know, I think what John has said, it's, you know, it's small sound bites, small chunks. 
it's a great little reference tool, I think. Um, and, you know, even if you don't, you know, take what we're saying verbatim, I think it just gets you thinking, you know, um, about those various subjects. And, and, and I absolutely love the title which Emma came up with, you know, A to Z, the human performance. Also, talking. Chris came up with a great strap line as well, didn't he? How to achieve greatness in sport, work and life. I thought that was excellent. Yeah. Great couple writing from the book as well. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. So I think Chris, you know, I think, but yeah, you know, I think someone mentioned it in the book. between four people, if you like, and a few others that have read through it, and I think it's to achieve something like this is great. You know, it's very exciting and uh, yeah, it's wonderful. It's I mean, a little I mean, pebble into the pond, isn't it? You never know what the ripples are going to be. There'll be some ripples that are for us that are enjoyable for us to ride little little waves, and then maybe there'll be some other people along the way. Chris has got the stats on, he'll be able to keep the stats on if, how many people we buy the book but um, I'm also thinking like the yeah, other yeah. thing is just to think about how easy writing actually is and you know we, we've got Steve's got his kid at home working I know I've got my two kids downstairs they're drilling these kids on their English and they're writing and they're trying to get writing but so, to use your writing for good is really really valuable for me and we, you know most people can write uh, but yet we you know how do we turn it into a force for good and it took me a lot of years to realise how easy it is to write a book. And it comes back to the, like, the kind of processes that you might use in sport. Can you write a coherent sentence? Because if you can, you can then write two. And if you can, you can write a page. And if you can, you know, then you can write a small chapter. If your ambition is not to, if you don't try and write the best book in the world or the longest or the cleverest, you know, the, the, I think in the fiction category, quite often people are trying to write this really clever top of the bestsellers book and with which, you know, that's really hard to do. So that's a very difficult thing to achieve. But anybody can sit down and, and who can write, can write down their thoughts. And there's, um, there's a great quote from uh, George Orwell who, who said um, something along the lines of, uh, and, uh, if, in order to do great thinking, you need to be able to do great writing. And, and those who can't do great thinking, other people will think for them. And, um, but it's encouragement for all of us to like, we can write a blog, we can write, uh, you know, a diary. It's, writing is a really valuable skill because it affects our thinking. And um, it was interesting to take you guys on this journey as well a bit. We, we've we done it before. We had written a book in a day or whatever. And it's actually it's like, do you know what? If, you can, if you've got interesting things to say and you're happy to just write in your own voice rather than some sort of grown-up writing style with long words, if you're able to just put what you would say into pa onto paper, um, it's, a, it's a great, enjoyable process to do and not that hard. It wasn't that hard, was it, guys? It's been a great process to see, to see the three of you put put it together, and um, and then work on the design, work on the on the copy. It's been uh, it's been a great process to be part of, sort of from the outside. Um, but as you say, you're all kind of from the outside in in the remote setup that you've written the book in. Yeah, I've got another quick quiz though. Right, if you're going to write, so now you're going to be a solo author. You've got to go off and write another book. <laughs> we'll start with Chris because he's he, uh, he'll be able to come up with something. Breaking up the band already. What would you write a book on, Chris? If you had to write another book, uh, probably teamwork. Teamwork. I think that's, okay, Steve. I think that's what I write. On. Yeah. Steve's architecture book, maybe. Right, Buildings right, of yeah. Bournemouth. <laughs> Neat protractors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, something fictional, and uh, dare I'd like to write something that's fun, but. Bearing in mind, my wife says I'm the least funny person. It would, <laughs> but I do love uh, Tom Sharp. I don't know whether any of you ever read any Tom Sharp books, uh, like Wilt, and uh, there's some some great books. Um, but the way he writes, he's, he's a former Marine as well. He died a couple of years ago, but his books are just superb. And if I could ever write something for fun, that would be fiction. But that's Emma. What about Emma? I, I'd love to write a children's book, I think, I think, you know, around belief and taking opportunities and so trying to link it in, but make it a, a children's book. I think that would... Children's book, even less words. Exactly. Exactly. More, more pictures. pictures. More you, could pictures. Write, you could write that today. Yeah. <laughs> I think you could uh, get the design team just to edit down what you've already got and put it into a children's book. Yeah. yeah. The kids love those kind of books. So I don't know. My daughter's yeah. reading um, the Steve Peters uh, children's version of the Chimp Paradox. And... Um, yeah, she's actually had a little effect on her. She's, she's good. I think I, I think I might have to try and write. So if maybe the, what I should try and write is the mountaineering stories that I want to go on the adventure. 
and then write them up afterwards. And that's a good way to kind of make it happen. How I fell down a crevasse. <laughs> Don't do that, Jono. Don't fall down. <laughs> you've got to go down them in the end. Not unless you've got Steve with you because he's a Steve's hero. Yeah. 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 Cool. Well, I think we're running out of time. Thanks so much for making our launch right. show. Yeah, we've got to wrap up the show. Uh, great. Thank you all. Thank and you, let's guys. see if we can get ourselves up the number one bestsellers ranking on Amazon. Right. Jono, thank you for pulling this together. Chris, yeah. thank you so much. And Emma, looking forward to meeting Eter you. Eternally grateful, boys. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. See you soon. <laughs>